Yeah, my name's Travis Wilkerson, and my project, which is a documentary film, is called Blood Relations. Um, this is from a small town paper, the Dothan Eagle, on October 14th, 1946. Bill Spann, Dothan Negro shot Saturday night during an altercation at Branch's grocery store on West Houston Street, died yesterday in a Dothan hospital. And the charge against S.E. Branch of 508 South Oat Street has been changed from assault with intent to murder to first degree murder. Spann was shot twice in the neck and lower abdomen about 7.30 Saturday night with a 32 caliber pistol. Branch told officers that the Negro entered the store, cursed him, and started to attack him with a knife when he shot him in self-defense. Go ahead and start the first image, please. Please note this child sitting here right now. It'll be important later. Essie Branch was my great-grandfather. I call him Granddaddy Branch on my mother's side. There's actually a photo of him holding me, smiling, uh, at six months old. We're both fat and bald, and so everyone says we look alike. <laughs> they also say that uh, Granddaddy Branch was a Klansman, and that that's how he got out of the first-degree murder charges, and he never served any time at all. Now, I first came to this story and started thinking about it while I was marching in South Los Angeles the day after the Zimmerman verdict. And as I was chanting, justice for Trayvon Martin, I kept thinking about this story over and over again. And so I called my mom from the march. I had a bullhorn over my shoulder. We were about to take the, the 10 freeway, actually. And I said, what do you know about this? And she sent me this article. And so at the beginning of the process, that's all that I knew about it. And that's really all that anyone ever talked about in the family. That was as much as we knew. Now, my grandfather and namesake, Arthur Creamer, my middle name is Arthur, um, was a photo buff. And so he shot dozens and dozens of rolls of film of the family. And of all these dozens of rolls of film, there's only 12 shots of Granddaddy Branch. Um, and those are these 12 shots you're seeing here. It's funny to me when I look at these images now. Um, they're strange to me for a lot of different reasons. It's hard for me not to think about the murder. I was watching uh, To Kill a Mockingbird recently with my daughter, Adva, who was reading it in school. And it struck me how similar these images looked to that film, actually. Except that my family is an Atticus Finch, and it's not even Boo Radley. It's that racist lynch mob that goes to kill Tom Robinson the night that he's in jail. Okay. I did as much research as I possibly could from home in Los Angeles where I live. Um, I requested any known legal documents. Um, there were none. They've all disappeared. Um, I got a copy of the death certificate of Bill Spann. Um, it's very difficult to describe the strange experience of looking at a death certificate where the cause of death is listed as homicide and knowing that it was your own kin who pulled the trigger. Um, but that's basically the limit of what I was able to learn, and so it was time for me to start traveling to Alabama, which I've been doing a great deal. Go ahead and start the next one. As we get going here, I'll just keep talking. Um, it's very difficult for me to explain how intense and strange and powerful and mystical this trip to Alabama has been, these multiple trips to Alabama have been. It's the strangest sense that I have that the old man knows what I'm up to, and he's throwing everything he can at me. I'm telling you, torrential downpours and tornadoes and even an almost biblical pestilence coming out of my walls when I got home from Alabama. But the very first place that I went when I finally got there was I drove to the store which I had been to as a child. It's no longer a store. It's now a kind of illegal bar, which ironically enough, in Alabama, they call a shot house. It's strange how similar the neighborhood is to what it was when I was a child and would go down there. It's still crushingly poor. It's still extremely segregated. It's interesting that their store was in a neighborhood that was 100% black. They depended upon, for their very survival, upon that, neighbor, that, that neighborhood. And those, there, there they are. There he is in his, in his public persona. Um, I'll have to tell you about more of those things on another time. So 
there's so much for me to share with you that I'm going to focus on one mad psychotic day that I had there, which is that I first went to a Confederate memorial ceremony, and you'll see that there. What a strange experience that was. It was in the middle of Alabama in a rural area. Um, the discourse is strange, to say the least. They knew I shouldn't be there, um, but I kept going and taking their images over and over again, and they were strangely vain about it. I felt filthy at the end of that day, and so I thought, what could possibly make me feel better? And so I thought, well, I'll go to Selma. That'll make me feel better, won't it? <laughs> well, it didn't make me feel better. It actually made me feel worse, because there's no sense of triumph there at all. Indeed, Selma is a deeply poor, deeply impoverished city, and you have a very concrete sense of a city that has been punished for its resistance ever since the events that have made that city famous. Now, part of the reason I was traveling back and forth to that Confederate Memorial Park was because I thought I would find my Aunt Jean there, my mom's sister. As it happens, my, my Aunt Jean is on the other side of the fence, so to speak. She's an active white supremacist. She's in a group called the League of the South. Uh, I have been trying to find her, and I've been trying to speak to her, but she is avoiding me. She knew I would be there somehow. I'm not really sure how she knew that I would be there, but somehow she sensed it, and so she didn't go to the event. Now, I've spent the bulk of my efforts since this trip, and I'm going back on Monday, actually. I'm heading straight there from here, trying to track down the descendants of Bill Spann, to understand what it meant to that family, because I do have a sense of understanding of what it meant to mine. Um, this is the image I spoke of at the, very, at the very beginning, an image of me being held by that old man. Um, it's an incredibly strange image for me to look at. <sighs> man, it's freak I'm going to go off script right now, because I was going to ask for a bunch of things, but I think instead I'm going to ask for something different, um, and you're not going to like what I'm going to ask you for. Um, I'm going to ask you to join me in a chant that's 69 years too late. And that chant is, Justice for Bill Spann. Justice for Bill Spann. Justice for Bill Spann.